Paul Sitter. Michael Shank Racing has the first ever LMP2. Paul here at Daytona. McNish waves the flag and we are racing for 2015 in the Tudor United Sports Car Championship opener is off to a very racy start indeed here at Daytona I think round the outside it looked like the O2 car got through and will lead into the international horseshoe for the first time the pole sitter has been jumped and it's going to be the Chip Ganassi car that leads the first half, half lap. Meantime, Ollie Gavin gets the hammer down in the Velocity Yellow Corvette as they go through underneath our feet. And we unleash something in the region of 35,000 horsepower onto the three and a half miles of this historic circuit here at Daytona International Speedway. Nice and clean at the start, but the Michael Shank racing car did get jumped at the front of the field, Jeremy. Yeah, great outside outside line pass there by Scott Dixon, not to be denied. They're absolutely side by side, right at the apex of the corner. And uh, Scott Dixon made that move stick around the outside. A pit, uh, pit call already, number 73 car. 20, 23, 23. Uh, Ooh, Mario Farnbucker. Uh, that's the team Seattle, Alex Job racing car. Very quick uh, pit stop and he's on his way again. I would assume something like maybe his belts weren't properly done or something, something little like that because it wasn't a, a long stop. And a spinner that has caused absolute Ooh. mayhem in the middle of the pack. The 52 PC car going around. That was and Tom Kimber Smith, wasn't it? it uh, yes, I think it was Tom the, Tom the start of that yeah. car. And Crikey. that he was in 15th position as he went across the line, the fourth PC qualifier. And that has called, caused mayhem, not for Scott Dixon, who leads comfortably at the end of the first lap, heading into the start finish area, the tri oval with Ozzy. Negri Jr. Osvaldo Negro Jr. in second place, then Pruitt in third position, Barbosa, Andy Merrick in the Delta Wing. Then it's Oli Pla in the 57 Crown Racing Leash here in sixth position as he went across the line. Advantage at the moment though. And then that big gap to the rest of the field after the incident. A huge gap after the first seven or eight prototypes before anyone else came through. And it's still Corvette leading the GTLM battle with Oli Gavin holding off the very close attentions of the 51 car. The Ferrari trying to get up alongside as they come through turns two and three and head towards the International Horseshoe under braking. And one of the Porsches in, it's the 912, I think, Paul. You may be able to see slightly better from your vantage point with the pair of binoculars. And that is a very early stop for the Porsches. Thank you. The Porsche factory cars in GTLM. Attention at the left rear there, John. Those cars have been improving gradually all the way through the week. Didn't have the best first session here. The three Porsches were eighth, ninth, and tenth, but they've been improving on that, working on it. As many of the teams have, Jeremy, this week. Yeah, they have. They've, they've, the track conditions have been kind of weird this weekend. Uh, they've, they've the teams have had difficulty kind of keeping up with the track conditions, but the, we spoke yesterday with uh, Owen Hayes, who's the technical director at uh, the Porsche, Autosport, P Porsche Motorsport team, and he claims that the car was handling much better yesterday in the final warm-up session. I think the uh, Porsche, the 912 Porsche, uh, may have had a little bit of damage at the left rear, may have had some contact with somebody as the other Porsche, the 23 car, comes back in for a second stop and he's only on uh, the completion of one lap thus far and already made two pit stops. Meanwhile, at the front of the field, Scott Dixon's... Uh, lead is uh, just under half a second paul the battle in gtlm is the three wide for a moment with corvette aston martin and ferrari absolutely together as one and for the moment the corvette with ollie gavin may just hold on but he's gonna have to tough it out down into turn one as they come through the transition off the slightly less sharp banking only only 18 degrees there and the ferrari has got ahead it's a new leader, Jimmy Bruni, goes to the head of the field. Pedro Lamy was sniffing around there as well, and Jan Magnussen is in fourth position. So it's Ferrari, Corvette, Aston Martin, Ferrari. Then the second Ferrari is the 62 car, that's in uh, fifth position. Tom Kimber Smith, Kimber Smith recovering his way back in the GTLM field before the first of the IHG reward BMWs, the number 25 car. That was a tough move round the outside into turn one. At the head of the field, though, Aussie has started to close down Scott Dixon. And now with the heat in the Continental tyres, it looks as though the 
the Mo the Mon style prototypes are coming to life just half a second last time at the line. Yeah, slightly heavy cars and uh, cool conditions like this. One would expect the, perhaps the DP cars just to get a little bit more heat into their tyres a little bit more quickly than the lighter P2 machines. But isn't it good to see the Delta Wing there running on in fifth place and actually challenging, looking to the inside there of Joe Barbosa. Andy Merrick who has started that Carnival Zero, the very distinctive Delta Wing. And he's giving Joe Barbosa a real mirrorful, mirrorful. But it is still Dixie that leads at the front of the field going now into the first of the ones. Osnegri there, what, just two or three car nets behind. You can see the DP car just really, it pulls away on initial acceleration out of that turn. Puts the power down really, really nicely. But through the kink, Osnegri closes in a little bit and under braking particularly. Uh, he is right there on the tail of that race leader. That Ford EcoBoost powered uh, Riley chassis of Chip Ganassi racing with Felix Labartis. So settling in as much as you can in these early stages with uh, only six minutes gone. We're on lap number four and you're live with IMSA Radio from Daytona International Speedway. And the first round of the season is the biggest and the longest race of the year. It's, it's still a bizarre car concept, isn't it, to start your motor racing season uh, with the biggest and longest race of the, it's almost like starting a baseball series with the world series or football season with the super bowl for the world cup final for soccer paul the car that's making progress at the moment is uh, johannes van oberbeck in the number two tequila patron sponsored uh, honda hpd uh, he's made up